Hello, in this video I want to show you how you can measure the speed of a DC motor and effectively then control its speed, but it's the measurement that's the hard bit. And to do this I've got some hardware uh, you can see here. I've got uh, one of our new eBlox boards with a display which we're not going to use and it's got it's an Arduino Mega board and it's got uh, six ports on the outside. On port B I've just got a display. On port C I've got a logic analyzer and we're going to use that later. And on port E uh, I've, I'm changing the connection slightly because on port E I've got this actuators board and the Arduino Mega um, needs slightly different connections. So I've just got a, a bunch of wires which are enabling me to put the connections of the motor to the PWM pins. And on the actuators board, what I've got is a DC motor and on the rotor, there's a small um, plastic uh, wheel um, with some tabs on it and they go into an opto sensor on the board. It's difficult to see there, but there's a little opto sensor and every time the tab uh, interrupts the light beam in the opto sensor, a pulse is transmitted to the Arduino uh, Mega. So it allows us effectively uh, to measure the speed of rotation of the motor. Now there's a small chip on board and we're driving uh, the motor through that power chip um, from the Arduino. So we can control the power going into the motor and we can hopefully measure the speed of the rotor itself. So how do we do that? I'll show you. Um, this is the program and it's a flow code program um, on port B as you can see I've got a display the motor is connected to uh, port E4 that's the PWM pin with E1 being a direction pin and we're going to just run the motor at a set speed and here's the main loop we start the LCD enable the motor We'll put the motor on at a speed of 200 out of 255 and we're going to use interrupts here and interrupts are a little awkward. Uh, we're going to enable first of all a timer interrupt which is going to allow us to um, measure the speed. We'll come to that in a bit. Um, actually we'll also come to this routine in a bit. So let's look at the timer interrupt. The timer interrupt on the Arduino Mega here um, we're going to use timer zero. It interrupts at 62,500 hertz. Um, so that gives us a pulse width of 16 microseconds. So every 16 microseconds, there's a timer interrupt. Now we're going to use a technique here um, to allow us to debug our programs. What we do on all of the routines is we output a one on a pin. In this case, it's C2 at the start of the routine and we output a zero at the end of the routine and that with a logic analyzer allows us to check that all of our routines are activated properly. Interrupts are awkward. The problem with them um, is that if you're not careful you can get your timings mixed up and you can be interrupting um, a routine that never gets time to finish and this gives the microcontroller problems because the stack uh, inside the microcontroller can overflow. So understanding the timings and getting them right is quite important. So with the timer interrupt, we output a pulse. Then we've got some variables. And basically, this isn't too complicated. We're just tracking the time that's elapsed. So we've got a variable called timer microseconds. If, uh, if it goes to 1,000, we've got a, another variable called timer milliseconds. And we're incrementing these. And then um, every 500 milliseconds, what we're doing is we're going to update the display. Now we don't update the display in the timer interrupt routine. What we do is we set a flag called display needs updating to true. And then that is, that is picked up in the main routine. So this is the timer interrupt routine. Going back to the main routine, we've got an endless loop. Um, uh, again, in this loop, we have a output to C0, when the loop starts, then is an, an, an output of one to C0 when the loop starts, an output of zero when it ends, 
and we're just checking that flag. If the display needs updating, then update the display. This is the update display routine. Again, there's another flag going out on C1 at the start and it's zero at the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to disable the interrupts during the display routine. And that's gonna guarantee that the display routine has time to finish. Now we're using another interrupt here. The, the little sensor that I showed you um, on the DC motor, that's connected to a pin on the Arduino Mega and that pin activates um, interrupt seven. And let me just show you that because it's uh, enabled and disabled here. It's disabled at the start of the update display routine and um, it's just the int seven input. It has no properties. So the interrupt, again, at the start, we output a one to C3, a zero at, uh, at the end. And we've got another flag variable called triggered. And what we're going to do is we've got some um, variables and the first time the um, opto sensor is interrupted, we set um, the value of the triggered flag to one and we record the timer interrupt value in two variables. Uh, first trigger time in milliseconds, first trigger time in microseconds. The second time it's interrupted, um, we record the second trigger time and then we work out the feedback period with a bit of maths. And so we've got two variables, feedback period milliseconds, feedback period microseconds. And so this little um, routine here allows us to measure the period of one of these veins. There are three of them on the rotor. And so we can work out then the, uh, the time taken for one vein to travel through the opto sensor. So we have the timer interrupt, the feedback interrupt, then we're updating the display. When we update the display, we disable the interrupts at the start and then we re-enable them at the end. And then in the middle, there's basically some mathematics and there's some routines um, that um, will just put information on the LCD. We're just gonna print various numbers and things like that. And to make uh, the program a bit neater, I'm just um, grouping them into, into one there. So the main routine, we've got the while loop and we're monitoring the update display flag and updating the, updating the display. Update display, turn the interrupts off at the start, back on again at the end. There's the timer interrupt and there's the feedback interrupt. So, that's in the device. And let's look at this now uh, functioning. And we can do that with this logic analyzer. So I'll turn the motor on. It's now running, as you can see. I'll play that again, but I've captured it before. Turn that off, because it's a bit noisy. So every 500 and odd milliseconds, a little error there, you can see that the update display flag is um, going high. And at that point, here's the timer interrupt. And the timer interrupt is going off at 16 microseconds, uh, as, as you can see there. Um, so we're turning that off when the display is updating. This is the feedback interrupt. Um, and you can see the time period there, 2.6 milliseconds. And again, that's being turned off when the display is updated. Um, the main loop is really interesting because the main loop you'd think would be the same time period all the time. But actually it's really interesting. It depends whether there's a timer interrupt at each part of the loop. Um, and so you can see how the timer interrupt is affecting the, uh, the time taken to carry out the loop. Of course, when there's an interrupt, the processor does all sorts of things to record whereabouts the program counter is and things like that. So um, it's not a regular waveform, the actual main loop um, activity. Okay, so that shows you how the program works. We've gone through the, uh, the program itself. I've shown it to you on the logic analyzer. Um, and looking at the hardware again, you can see 
here on the display if I run it. Um, the interrupts in microseconds is 2600. Um, the rotation frequency is 126 hertz and that gives us an RPM of, of pretty close to 8000. Uh, it's hard for you to see see that on the uh, the display there but it does show you the um, the numbers. So that explains how we can measure the speed of a motor and I've got a very small motor here the techniques are exactly the same for a much larger larger motor. Okay thank you for watching.